the Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> The makers of Johnson Wax products for home and industry present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie, with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. Let's talk about your automobile for a minute. I'll admit that as a piece of transportation, it's only as good as the motor and the tires. And I think you'll admit that as a thing of beauty, it's only as good as the paint job. But that's something you do have control over. You can keep the finish of your car clean and sparkling at small cost and with very little work, with the occasional use of Johnson's Car New. This popular auto polish really does two jobs at the same time. It cleans and polishes with one application. Carnew, please remember, is a liquid which dries on application to a white powder. When you wipe off this powder, the dirt and grime and dullness come off with it, leaving a shining, beautiful finish that you'd almost forgotten. Carnew does an amazing cleaning job without injuring the finish. And it's so easy to use, you'll gladly do the job yourself. Why not give your car a spring house cleaning this week with the old, reliable, unchanged Johnson's Carnew, spelled C-A-R-N-U. There's a big band concert and bond rally scheduled at the Wistful Vista Auditorium tonight. And when you see who's muscled in as director of the whole thing, you can understand the derivation of the word auditorium. From audi, meaning listen, and toro, meaning bull. <laughs> yes, it's himself, of Fibber McGee and Molly. Hey, Charlie, have the boys move those borders back and lower the teaser a little. Get some new bulbs for the babies and drape some bunning over the apron. Okay, Chief. Good thing there's somebody in this town who knows a stage brace from an usher's flashlight. Say, I thought Mrs. Carstairs was in charge of this thing. Oh, sure, sure. Let her have her picture in the society section. But you and I know who's the brains behind this thing, don't we? <laughs> Certainly. Yeah. Henry Morgenthau, Jr. Huh? Or, uh, Henry Morgenthau, Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I had quite a tussle getting this thing out of Carstairs' hands, but I made it. Uh, hey, Charlie. Yeah? Have Eddie hit the boards with them one sheets and check the marquee for deads. I want six chairs and a podium for center stage, and the popcorn machine moved into the manager's office. Right? I don't know, but I'll do it. Why put the popcorn machine in the manager's office, McGee? Because that's where I'm going to headquarter tonight. <laughs> this is going to be one time I come to this joint where they didn't run out of popcorn before I got mine. <laughs> Was Mrs. Carstairs annoyed when you moved in on the arrangements, dear Annoyed? Oh, wow. She blew out like a four-time retread. <laughs> My gosh, somebody had to be in charge that knows what... Oh, 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 here she comes. Old Lady Carstairs. Where do you suppose she learned to walk like that? Like a fat pigeon on a hot pavement. Now, uh, McGee. McGee, after all, oh, now well, you can't... Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Carstairs? So nice to see you. How do you do, Mrs. McGee? Mm, hi, Carsty. Well, you might as well trot home and dunk the frame in a bubble bath, kiddo. I got everything under control. Mr. McGee, I think the time has come for someone to tell you a few truths about yourself. Ah, oh, save the compliments till after the show, Carsty. <laughs> I know how you feel, and I appreciate it. You can't help it if you don't know an amber spot from a center door fancy. Himself here was in vaudeville, Mrs. Carstairs, mm -hmm. and he learned the theater business inside and out, sometimes both on the same day. <laughs> <laughs> this is not vaudeville, Mrs. McGee. This is Wistful Vista's golden opportunity to show the world its interest in and support of the Seventh War Loan. Personally, I feel that Mr. McGee has lowered the proceedings to the undignified level of a flea circus. Well, better put on too many fleas than too much dog, Kirsty. 
<laughs> when people begin... Oh, excuse me. You want to see me, Charlie? Yeah. Uh, look, Chief, you want I should check with the juicer for cues on the oleo? On the oleo? You mean for the popcorn? Yeah, sure, as long as we can't get butter. Oleo's just a... No, 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 no. <laughs> oleo. Oh, oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, the oleo, oh, sure. Yeah, check with the juice on that, yeah. yeah. Uh, right, and, uh... May I ask a question, boss? What is it, bud? You ever sit on a big boulder at noon on a hot day? Why, sure, sure, I guess I did. Uh, well, what's that thing between your eyes and your mouth? Well, that's my nose. What do you think it was? My (laughs) good man, what is the purpose of these ridiculous questions? Uh, we just had an argument backstage, ma'am. The boys delegated me to see if this guy knew his nose from a hot rock. Thanks, (laughs) boss. Great bunch of boys, them stagehands. <laughs> Always kidding, dropping sandbags and stuff. <laughs> now then, when I make the big speech of the evening, Carsty. Please, Mr. McGee. I specifically asked the mayor himself to make the principal address of the evening. Sure, but I canceled him out, Carsty. I told him to stay home. That guy talks like he had a mouthful of coat hangers. <laughs> I'll make the big speech myself, with inflections. I'm sure if you buy a big enough bond, Mrs. Carstairs, McGee can arrange to have you sit on the stage and hear it up real close. My dear, Mr. Carstairs and I have each purchased $5,000 worth of extra bonds. Oh, swell. Well, that entitles you... To stay home, I'm sure. Good day, Mrs. McGee. Good day, Mrs. Carstairs. <laughs> you know, I think she's a little upset about this, dearie. Ah, uh, poof. All that big goldfish knows about the theater You could pack away in a dab of lint (laughs) She's so dumb She thinks the little theater movement is a bump (laughs) Now just the same, McGee She can... Oh That sounds like the orchestra Yeah I better check their music for tonight Oh, now listen, maybe you better stay out of that department, dearie You're no musician Well, so what? The Warner Brothers are no piano team either But they put on some pretty good shows Hey, Billy, Billy Mills Don't bother me now, Skimp I gotta run over this music From what I heard of it this morning It sounds like it had already been run over (laughs) By a dump truck Look, my Tosca little ninny (laughs) Just because you have an ear for music Oh, Oh, uh-huh. you admit I have an ear for music, eh? Why not? You could put a bass fiddle in each one of them. <laughs> I'll run along home, will you? we got to rehearse. Oh, Mr. Mills, I'd like to hear what you're going to play. Go ahead. Okay, Mom. All right, boys, kiss me again from the beginning. <laughs> kiss me again from the beginning. Of all the corny old loud motors... <laughs> Stop. Oh, that won't do, Mills. That's too smaltzy. Whoever wrote that arrangement ought to take his musical saw and go back to the lumber camp. (laughs) I wrote this myself. Yes, and I thought it was beautiful, McGee. Beautiful, my clavicle. Here, give me them scores. I'll go home and dash off an arrangement that'll make Gilbert kick the harp out of Sullivan's hand. (laughs) Wait a minute there, skimp. What do you know about music? What do I know about music, he said. Yes, he said that. Hmm. (laughs) I merely studied it for six years in the Peoria Conservatory. (laughs) I studied under Professor Ware for a long, long time. Long underwear McGee, I would. Oh, my. Long underwear. The mighty mucky muck of the metronome Making mugs of the mediocre musical mutts Muddling through a mess of monotonous medleys Making millions marvel at the minor melodies Made out magnificent musical masterpieces By the miraculous movements of my magic mitts Miffing many maestros as I modulated From arch military to minuet and G So get on with your rehearsal and we shall see What we shall see <laughs> King's men saying this little bond went to battle. Once upon a time, there was a nursery rhyme that gave the kids a chuckle and a smile. Now the words are changed, it's all been rearranged to serve a purpose even more worthwhile. This little bond went to battle, this little bond fought at home, this little bond turned the lights on again. On top of the Capitol Dome This little bomb sent torpedoes Into a U-boat pen Every bomb to slam to the foes of Uncle 
Sam. So let's keep on slamming them again. Everybody knows just how the saying goes. The pen is even mightier than the sword. So get out your pen and write those checks again. Then Uncle Sam can pass along the word. This little bond went to battle. This little bond fought at home. This little bond bought B-29. Spell billion. That's easy. B I L Y O N. You know, that's the way I got it, but it looks funny, dearie. Well, take my word for it, Tootsie. That's correct. How are you coming with my speech? Pretty well, I think. How does this sound now? The war in Europe against Germany and Italy is over. Mm-hmm. But the war against hunger, privation, and distress will go on for many, many months. It is our money, yours and mine. The money we put in war bonds which will fight this war to an end. Seven billion dollars. Mm. You know, that word still doesn't look right, McGee. Isn't it B-I-L-L-Y-O-N? <laughs> Two L's, isn't it? No, 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 just one L. Oh? <laughs> Seven billion dollars is the quota for individual purchases in this seventh war loan. With this money, we will bring order in Europe and continue the war against the Japanese in the Pacific. That's all I got so far. Oh, that's very good, Molly. I couldn't have done better myself. Well, that's high praise indeed, dearie. Mm -hmm. (laughs) How's your musical arrangement coming? Oh, it's going to be wonderful. Kiss me again. I lead off with a harp glissando, you see, and then I go... You lead off with a what, Sander? A harp glissando. What on earth is that? I don't know, but they all use them. (laughs) I just wrote down, insert harp glissando here, and let Billy Mills worry about the technicalities. (laughs) Architects don't lay bricks, do they? No, but composers lay eggs. And this opera of yours begins to sound like hen fruit of a very low order. Yeah. Now, you wait and see. Birds singing so... Yeah, I, start with, I start with a harp with Sandy, see, and then I let the flutes take it for six bars and then a two-bar tacit. What's a tacit? That's a musical term, meaning take the derby hats off the trumpets. <laughs> Have to do that because there's a lady in the orchestra. Kiss me again. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Hello, Mr. McGee. Jeepers, are you tuning the piano again? No, no, he isn't, Alice. He's making a musical arrangement. Oh. And if Kiss Me Again doesn't wind up a very wet smack, it won't be his fault. <laughs> Gee, I never knew you wrote music, Mr. McGee. You didn't, eh? <laughs> didn't you ever hear the high school song I wrote for the freshman class in Peoria High? Say, I never heard that either, McGee. Well, Natch, I just wrote it last week. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even mailed it to him yet. Uh, well, how does it go, Mr. McGee? Airmail, special delivery. <laughs> I thought they might as well have it in time for graduation. Oh, she meant how does the melody, if any, go, McGee? Oh, well, I can't go into all that now. I got no time for Pearl Pratt. This music has got to be done for the bond rally tonight. Oh, are you going, Alice? Oh, I wouldn't miss it for a farm with a barn full of Van Johnsons. I told my boyfriends that the one who bought the biggest bond could take me. Oh, how's the bidding going, Alice? Oh, very nicely, Mrs. McGee. The high man so far is the boy that his father owns the airplane plant. Mm -hmm. But I don't like him as well as the boy that he works at the next bench to me, which he naturally hasn't got as much money as Freddie, who is the boy that his father owns the plant. Well, take my advice, Alice, and latch on to the boy that his old man has got the most mazuma. Well, I'm not getting married yet anyway. I want to study art a little while longer. Heavenly days, Alice. I didn't know you were studying art. Oil or watercolor, Alice? Oh, neither one. Art is the boy that he works at the next fence to me. Mm. Well, I'll see you tonight, folks. better get on with our work, dearie. Time's a-skipping. Yeah, I still got a lot to do. I haven't even brought in the string section yet. 
How many strings has Billy Mills got in his band? Well, now, let me see. Now, there's six fiddles, a guitar, a piano, and a harp. Mm -hmm. And the saxophone players each have one around their necks. <laughs> Counting four strings to a fiddle, four to the guitar, 88 on a piano, and about 75 on the harp. That's about 171 strings. <laughs> My gosh, I never realized how big an outfit that was. Oh, well, I'll cut it in there. Bird singing softly above. Hi, Hi, folks. Oh, what's everybody so busy about? Hello, Mr. Wilcox. We're getting ready for the Bond Rally tonight. I'm writing McGee's speech, and he's making an orchestration for Billy Mills. Yeah. Anything I can do to help? I play a little piano. Well, that doesn't help much, Mr. Wilcox. The piano at the auditorium is a great big one. <laughs> Well, maybe I can help write his speech, Molly. I've got a good angle on it. Yes, Mr. Wilcox? Sure. You know what day this is? May 22nd, so what? This, my little pal, is National Maritime Day. Well, I still say, so what, Junior? Well, you can use it in your speech. How, Mr. Wilcox? Look, ladies and gentlemen, this is National Maritime Day, a day dedicated to the United States Merchant Marine. It's a day on which we pay tribute to the courage and tenacity of our merchant fleet and its men, who have contributed so much to the winning of the war in Europe and the maintenance of vital supplies in the Pacific. I don't, still don't see what that got to do with the war loan. <laughs> well, look, many of these men have performed feats of heroism equal to those of men in the armed forces. Their casualty rate has been high and will continue to be high until the final victory in the Pacific. These men in 1944 carried 8,000 tons of supplies every hour, every day. Arms, ammunition, and medical cargoes bought and paid for by your purchase of war bonds. It's up to all of us to keep those supplies going to the fighters who need them. Let's send them over the bounding waves on a sea of waving bonds. Say, I think you got something there, Junior. Thanks very much. Yes, I can use that, Mr. Wilcox. Okay. Now, can I help with the music? I still don't think you know anything about music, Waxy. Oh, no? Well, for your information, smart guy... I played a sweet potato when I was only seven. You did? Well, why didn't you keep it up, Mr. Wilcox? It sprouted when I was eight, and I couldn't keep the leaves out of my eyes. <laughs> well, you answer just one simple musical question, Junior, uh, Junior, and I'll let you help me, my bum bum. Okay, shoot, pal. <laughs> Where do you find G on the piano? You're kidding. There's no G in Steinway. <laughs> Rally, Mr. Wilcox. Okay. <laughs> that guy's about as musical as a worn brake shoe. On the contrary, <laughs> McGee, I've heard him sing, and he has a very nice voice. Ah, poof. He's got a rasp in his voice you could file your way out of Alcatraz with. <laughs> well, I gotta get to work. Me too. Kiss me. Kiss me. Kiss me. Oh, dead rat, that's dead. Oh, now, what's the matter? Did you default on a note? No. Busted my pencil. You got a pencil? No, will a lipstick do? After all, if you're scoring, kiss me again. No, no, no. <laughs> I gotta have a pencil. I'll ask Beulah to bring you a knife. Oh, Beulah! Beulah! Somebody bowl for Beulah? <laughs> Hey, Beulah, I want to sharpen a pencil. You got a good sharp knife in the kitchen? If I ain't, uh, I sure have persuaded the jackets off a big mess of spuds. <laughs> uh, would an extra pencil help, Mrs. McGee? Oh, oh, yeah, fine. Where can I find one? Behind your left ear. Huh? Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> I had that there for the bass notes. <laughs> well, thanks, Beulah. Thank no, you very that's much. That's okay, sir. Um, can I ask a question, please, folks? Why, certainly, Beulah. What do you want to know? I want to know what's going on here, man. I'm out there in the kitchen trying my best to mind my own business. But between the click-clack of that typewriter and the roomp de boomp of that pen, I'm going quite a berserk from dissatisfied curiosity. Well, I'm in charge of the big bond rally tonight, Beulah, at the auditorium. I'm arranging some music, and Mrs. McGee is writing my speech. Well, for goodness sake. What music are you writing, sir? <laughs> Kiss me again. Hmm? Kiss me again. I thought they'd already been rude. Well, he's making a new arrangement of it, Beulah. The score I'm working on will probably be the classic arrangement of all time, Beulah. You see this sheet here? Yeah, sir. You see the staff? Hmm? Ordinarily, it's got only five lines and four spaces. 
I'm doing it on six lines and five spaces. <laughs> Nobody's ever done that before in the whole history of music. <laughs> and if you hear a thump, thump, thump in the distance, Beulah, it'll be that little white dog that sits by the Victrola in the advertisement scratching his head. Yeah. Thump, thump, thump. Little white dog. <laughs> man's wife. Hurry up, Molly. We haven't got too much time now if I'm going to give the band this new music. What time is it? I don't know, but listen. How do you know? That burglar alarm on Bernstein's first door. It always goes haywire at 7.32. (laughs) Been doing it for years. Why they don't fix it? Oh, look, McGee, here comes Dr. Gamble. Yoo-hoo. Hello, doctor. Well, hello, Molly. And how are you, drop seat? (laughs) Hi, Aerosmith. What you wandering the streets for? Waiting for somebody to get run over so he can bum a free ride to the hospital? No, dear boy. I am attending the big bond rally tonight and for the sheer joy of going to a theater and not seeing Alan Ladd's picture in the lobby. Don't you like Alan Ladd, Doctor? I think he's wonderful. I'm sure he's a fine young man and splendid actor, my dear. But he reminds me too much of my youth. He, uh... The image of me in my 30s. In your 30s, Narcissus, moving pictures were just a question mark in Edison's notebook. Speaking of moving pictures, soundtrack, just where are you going? We're going to the Bond Rally, too, Doctor. McGee's in charge of it, you know. Who put him in charge? The Japanese embassy? (laughs) He couldn't sell a $20 bill for 35 cents to a Portuguese pawnbroker. Oh, yeah, well, now look, artery pincher. You can't get a seat at this rally without buying a war bond, you know. And if you think you can wave a 25-cent war savings stamp at the usher and peek out through the door of the men's lounge, you better reconnoiter. Don't heckle me, you noisy little corn popper. I gave up the idea of buying some new x-ray equipment and bought a $1,000 bond to help this thing out. Well, I'm sure McGee didn't mean anything. I don't care what he meant, my dear. Now, look. I've worked on hundreds of men back from Europe and the Pacific. Believe me, a trip through a veteran's hospital is a sure cure for complacency. And if any bonds I buy will help shorten this war by one split second, they can have the gold out of my teeth. No, I was just kidding, Doc. I merely meant... I know what you merely meant, rabbit foot. (laughs) I was just trying to say that if anybody thinks he can sit back and let the world come to a lovely state of milk and honey, he better start buying a cow and get the bees out of his own bonnet. Yeah, I agree with you, Doctor. Me too, Doc. Have a cigar? Thanks, I have one. You got two? Thanks. <laughs> I'll smoke it after the rally. Oh, oh, here's the stage door. Come on in, kids. If anybody says anything, you just tell them you're with me. My, my. Sounds like a tremendous crowd out there, dearie. Mm, should ought to be. The promotion work I've done on it. Oh, I'm sure of that, Mousy. You'll probably be awarded the purple ticket stub with a cluster of peanut brittle. (laughs) You and Molly wait here in the flies, Doc. I gotta get to the pit. I'll see you later. Ladies and gentlemen, WBIS brings you tonight a broadcast of the great seventh war loan bond rally from the Wistful Vista Civic Auditorium. This is a gala scene here, folks. All the cream of Wistful Vista society is turned out, and every person in this great hall tonight has bought a war bond, an extra war bond for admission to this rally. Do you see McGee, Doctor? No, I don't, and I count it among my blessings. We're very fortunate tonight in having with us one of the finest orchestras in the state, the Wistful Vista Philharmonic, under the able baton of maestro William Randolph Mills. <laughs> Acknowledges the applause, takes a bow. Just a minute, folks. There's a slight disturbance in the pit. Someone is talking to the maestro. He's waving a sheet of music at him. Maestro Mills shakes his head and turns away. 
The man tugs at his coattails. The maestro... But there seems to be a slight argument. Who is it, Doctor? Can you see? No, but I can guess. That stupid, clabber-headed little Something runt... Something very unusual is going on down there. He seemed to... Uh-oh. Maestro Mills has just thrown down his baton and climbed out of the pit. The other man... According to a note just handed me by my assistant, is a Mr. Flabber McSpee. <laughs> just picked up the baton, raised his hands. Here's the downbeat. <laughs> of it, bud. Why? I bought a bond to get in here. Well, naturally. If I buy another one, can I get out? <laughs> yes, you can, wise guy, and anybody else that don't like it can do the same thing. I'll take it. Give me a There are so many extra uses for Johnson's Wax, we're apt sometimes to forget that its first use is to protect and beautify your floors. After all, they get the hardest wear of any part of your home. Now, if a floor isn't beautiful, it's almost impossible to have a lovely, attractive room. On the other hand, a gleaming, richly polished floor sets off your furnishings to their best advantage. So, there's every reason to keep all of your floors well-polished and well-protected with genuine Johnson's Wax. Actually, they take on greater beauty with every waxing. The tough film of Johnson's Wax seals the pores of the wood against dirt and moisture and protects the finish itself, and thus saves costly refinishing. And you need not re-wax the entire floor. You can touch up as often as necessary those areas of extra heavy traffic, such as doorways and the entrance hall. Remember also that a Johnson waxed home is a clean home, and a clean home is more healthful. Ladies and gentlemen, there are some shows you can't buy your way out of, except at the price of blood, sweat, and tears. There's a show like that going on in the Pacific right now, and it's up to us to buy an end to it. We can do it with our purchases of war bonds in this mighty seventh war loan. We can buy the guns and ships and planes and tanks that are needed to overwhelm a tough and determined enemy. Yes, and we can buy more than that. Your war bond purchases are merely loans to your government. That means you are purchasing post-war security and a controlled economy for our fighting men to come home to. So buy your extra war bonds today, all you can afford, and a little more. Let's prove that when it comes to buying bonds, American clothing has no pockets of resistance. Good night. Good night, all. <laughs> This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson Wax Finishes for Home and Industry, inviting you all to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>